LED lamps promise to get rid of the drudgery of swapping broken light bulbs all the time. So why didn't they? Well, it's down to do with business and uh, the old uh, light bulb uh, uh, cartel that has been existing for the past hundred plus years. So what we are looking at here is the specification uh, as far as lifetime is concerned for this particular Philips Corpro 13 watt bulb and uh, as you can see it's absolutely horrifying. So we have hours and failure rate. In 20,000 hours basically all of these bulbs have failed and in a specified 15,000 hour runtime half of the bulbs are expected to fail and 30,000 hours we have a 100% failure rate. Now if you look at any LED data sheet, if you run them at uh, uh, sensible power levels, they are going to last all the way up here until, without even losing 20% uh, of their brightness. So why do we see this sort of behavior? Well, uh, it's down to do with uh, design of the bulbs and uh, the fact that every single light bulb manufacturer profits from selling you more bulbs. No one is going to pay for a bulb uh, that runs longer. That's just how humans seem to work. Now, thankfully, uh, I bought a few of these uh, Corpro bulbs uh, just, just to see what they're like. And uh, I popped, took them apart. And this particular model, this particular series of these Corpro bulbs is absolutely lovely for making your own uh, so-called Dubai bulbs because these are very easy to modify to cut the brightness in half. Now why would you want to do that? Well uh, I took some thermal images off uh, one of these while they're running and the LEDs inside here they are running at 100 degrees Celsius in normal operation. The outside case of a bulb is about 70 to 80 degrees. It's too hot to touch. It's absolutely horrible. No wonder it fails when uh, the uh, runtime specified for uh, LEDs at those power levels uh, is significantly diminished and they are probably running them at more than the specified current as well. We can never know that for sure because uh, good luck finding the data sheet for the particular LEDs used in these. Uh, but given the failure rates we're seeing here and how poor they actually are, uh, we can be quite sure that these are overdriving the LEDs. So what makes these particular bulbs so special? Well, uh, for starters, they are very easy to disassemble. Uh, when you, if you just shove a blade in between here, uh, you can rather easily uh, just rip them apart. Uh, you want to make a little note in which direction the plastic goes just to, to make it easier to put it back together. Uh, and if we have a look on the electronics inside, we have two magical components right there, which are very easily accessible. These are the current setting resistors for the uh, Bright Power 2861 LED drive chip. And if we do nothing but remove one of those, we cut the power level of this bulb in half. We turn this overheating 13 watt bulb into a six watt bulb. And the effect of that it the temperature of the LEDs drops down to about 60 degrees, as does the temperature of the drive chip. And that is going to turn this from a 15,000 hour bulb into a 50,000 hour bulb, at least. These are going to last until something goes wrong, a problem with the, the drive electronics, some surge of a power grid or something. They're going to last until you don't want them anymore. And that's why I have just gone out and bought up as many of these old bulbs as I could possibly get my hands on. Sadly, I'm filming this in 2022, and this series, if we look on the underside there, it's the 2018 series. These white boxes, they don't ship these anymore. They are obsolete. Uh, the, the replacement comes in blue boxes. I tried buying those. They have a completely different internal design. They will not work for this modification. So don't go out and buy this just based on uh, the you know, code on the bottom. If it doesn't come in this white box and if it doesn't have uh, this writing, the bottom 
row of text here separated into two lines, uh, these, the, these bulbs are not uh, worthy of any attention. Uh, the newer series has uh, the 5600 VBNL just written on one long row there, and uh, those are the modern uh, variation which doesn't have these easily accessible uh, current setting resistors. So uh, let's just uh, have a bit of a look at uh, how these perform uh, unmodified and uh, let's just uh, build a few Dubai bulbs of our own. Okay, so uh, let's start with a baseline power reading for this particular bulb. And it's using quite spot on 13 watts. Uh, now, uh, because these bulbs are actually overheating, uh, Philips are using the terrible trick of using a thermally, com a thermally limited uh, drive chip. Uh, these will actually drop down to about 11 watts once they reach uh, operating temperature. Uh, so Philips are quite obviously aware of the fact that these bulbs uh, are overheating. Right, so here's a close-up of the uh, drive electronics uh, of this particular bulb. Uh, so we have a rectifier, the BP2861 driver, and our two current setting resistors. Uh, this bulb has a 5.6 ohm and a 5.1 ohm resistor there. Uh, if you remove them, you get a bit different results. Uh, I find that removing the 5.6 uh, ohm one, uh, leaving the 5.1 ohm uh, gives good results because uh, it gives you a slightly higher power level of roughly six watts, whereas removing the uh, 5.1 ohm gives you uh, just under six watts. Uh, but the thermal performance uh, is perfectly good at six watts. So there's no point uh, running it uh, any cooler than this in my opinion. Uh, and uh, that's literally all you need to do. So let's just uh, put this bulb back on the power meter and see what it does. All right, so we now have the exact same 13 watt bulb mounted in the socket with the resistor removed. So let's turn on the power and see what happens. And our 13 watt bulb has now turned into a 6 watt one. And this one is not going to become too hot to touch. So now I'm just going to mark this. And with that out of the way, we just uh, find the marking on the case and uh, pop it back together. This actually sticks in place without any adhesive. It won't be perfect, but you can see it snaps together just fine. There's no risk of this popping up uh, until you, unless you really abuse it. So all that's left to do is do the rest of them. These are all the bulbs I managed to find. And uh, sadly, uh, most of these are free facing Kelvin. Uh, they were all out of the uh, 2700K K ones. I bought all the ones I had, which was like six, and then I believe nine of these uh, free facing Kelvin ones. Uh, and I think the free facing K ones are slightly different. I think they have a bit more power by default and uh, they seem to have different uh, resistors. So let's also rip this uh, free phasing K1 apart. Uh, that's the uh, UP uh, code on it and uh, see what we have. Ooh, more LEDs. The free phase and K1 seems a bit more hardcore. Yes, indeed, the free phase and K version is significantly more hardcore than the 2700K one. Uh, this one has 34 LEDs uh, instead of the 22 of the uh, uh, 2700K version, and it has two 3.9 ohm current setting resistors uh, as opposed to the uh, to 5.6 ohm ones, and it has a beefier uh, 2866 LED driver rather than the 2861 in the uh, 2700K model. Hmm, interesting. So uh, let's just uh, put this in the power meter and see how much power it uses. All right, we have a 3000 K version in its original configuration in the light socket, so let's light it. See what it does. 
So this one actually uses 14 watts uh, in its default configuration. And uh, that is absolutely terrible because this one has the same uh, power dissipation issue as the 2700K version, uh, which uh, already is overheating at uh, about 13 watts. So this one is going to probably drop down uh, to about 11 watts once it actually warms up as well. Uh, but let's uh, remove one of the current sensor resistors and see what those 14 watts turn into. All right, when I plugged in, same 3000K 13 watt bulb, it has turned into a 67 watt bulb, which is absolutely fine uh, given the amount of LEDs and the power dissipation. So uh, now I'm just going to run a few of these bulbs uh, and see just how hot they get so we can have a good comparison for the thermals of the 3000K model as well. Right, so uh, the bulbs have been warming up for quite a while now, so let's have a look at the thermals. So starting off with the original bulb, you can see that the outside case temperature is uh, uh, close enough to 80 degrees. And if we have a look at the actual LEDs, uh, they are over 90C. The scale is telling me the maximum temperature on the screen right now is 95 degrees, so that's going to be one of the LEDs and they're fairly uniformly warm across all of them. The fact that the light, light is on does not seem to affect the thermal camera at all. 98 degrees, I've tried uh, turning it off uh, and uh, the readings stay the same, so we don't have any noise there. So let's move on to the modified 7 watt 3000 K light. So the uh, case temperature is 51 degrees and if we look at the LEDs, maximum temperature on screen right now is 64, 65, 66 degrees. I'm not sure where that is actually. 59, oh, it's, it's seeing. It's seeing that last in the background, that's what's so hot. Let's get a better angle to avoid that. So, yes, the maximum temperature of the LEDs here seems to be about 59 degrees. And again, fairly uniformly warm uh, across the entire across the entire light. So that's a 40 degree drop on that one. And finally, let's have a look at uh, a modified uh, 2700K lamp. Is that the one? I think so. It's difficult to see, that's so bright. That's definitely not the modified one. So this is gonna be the modified 2700K lamp. So that's the lowest power of them all at about six watts. So we have a case temperature of 47 degrees, 48 at the most. And if we look at the actual LEDs, uh, the drive chip in these get hotter, so that's 60 degrees. Uh, and the actual LEDs, 58 degrees. So, you know, they all land at around 60 degrees on the LEDs uh, when you modify them, uh, which makes sense since this has about uh, uh, it has a fair fewer number of LEDs and it's running at a bit lower power, so you would expect uh, some kind of uh, roughly similar results. Uh, but uh, again, the thermal performance of the original lamp is just absolutely atrocious. 77 degrees, 78 on the case. That is hot enough to burn you, and that's not even inside a luminaire yet. Uh, so. <laughs> It's fairly obviously quantifiable uh, that uh, doing this modification significantly improves the thermal performance of these lamps. And we can now see uh, that the actual power output of the original lamp uh, has started to drop off as the uh, drive chip goes into thermal limiting mode. 
Uh, so it started out at 14 watts, it's now at uh, between 12 and 13 watts. And if this were installed in a luminaire, it would be probably dropping down towards 11 watts. And while those lights were warming up, I have been modifying all the rest of them. Uh, it took about half an hour to do all of those. Now, I have been slightly bamboozled because we have one of a newer generation of these lights. One of the packages, it's obviously been opened at some point and someone stuck a new lamp in there. Uh, now this gives us a good chance to see the differences between the new generation and the old generation. Uh, so uh, the old generation, they look very similar but there are distinguishing features. The old generation, they can see the lowest row of text is on two rows, whereas on this one, it's one wide row. Now, the printing is also a bit different, and uh, the fit and finish of the uh, top bulb is much worse. Uh, you can clearly feel how it's sticking out there, whereas on the uh, older generation lights, uh, it's actually very flush between there. there there's no uh, ridge to be felt. Uh, so I'm not going to bother returning this one. Uh, so let's just take this apart as well. It comes apart in the same way and see why the new ones are not suitable for modification. All right, we've separated the case. Let's uh, take it apart and... Oh! Oh, that's interesting! The new generation of the three facing K ones has the same configuration. That's good news. Uh, the uh, a new version of the 2700K ones, they have this exact same case, actually have a completely different uh, driver configuration, which do not have these components. Oh no, these are different packaging than the ones I tested on. It. Well, that's good. Uh, never mind then. Maybe, just maybe, the free facing K ones of these are still modifiable, but I'm not going to hedge my bets on it. So, there we have my attempt at making a DIY Dubai bulb. Now, what sort of uh, uh, lifetime improvement can we actually expect from this? Uh, it's very difficult to say with any certainty uh, because specifications for this sort of thing are difficult to come by. Uh, but if we assume that they are overdriving the LEDs, which they absolutely would be in order to achieve a 100% failure rate at 30,000 hours, uh, I would imagine that we're going to see something. We're going to see at least this curve stretch out so that uh, we're closer to... 30,000 hours and maybe something like that is what we can expect from this. And a similar thing would be true for the uh, brightness uh, decrease over time. So I looked at some Cree data sheets and at uh, 55 degrees operating temperature, many of our LEDs reach the 80% mark at around 70,000 hours. So if we extrapolate that's that's 20,000, so it's going to be more like something like that. The, these are just my estimates. There could be other hardware failures in the LEDs. There could be random power grid issues. Uh, but something along these lines, this might be a bit pessimistic, actually, just from my gut feeling. Uh, but uh, I'm going to... You know, just run these, and I imagine I won't be buying any new bulbs for a considerable time moving forward. So I'm going to have to thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you can uh, get your hands on something similar to these. Cheerio!